old self, man. Long time no see. Good to see you, man. I bought a computer real quick, though. That's what you came out of stop. What do you need my computer for? Yeah, I finished a couple of sounds, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You never stop working, do you? Uh -huh. But I'm kind of busy myself. I'm working. I please, I need it just like a couple minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. How about this? We'll play one on one for the computer. Come on now, you don't want that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot Mr. Basketball. No, yeah, go ahead and use it, man. <laughs> I wasn't thinking right there. <laughs> All right, guys, this week on the JS Report, I got Lausanne Lynx boys basketball coach Marvis Davis and basketball player Seth Greenberry, uh, Mr. Basketball finalist Seth Greenberry, I might add. But Seth, welcome to the JS Report once right. again. Glad to be here. Seth, uh, just talk about the accomplishment this year. I know y'all fell short against Webb the other day, and y'all lost by uh, a heartbreaker. But just talk about the season for me. It was one. Uh, it was a season of memory. We made. I made good memories. I uh, made good guys. Uh, got good exposure and just, you know, you know, our record showed success, but it was way more than that. We had we worked, work, work, and it was just a good experience and it wasn't changing for the world. So y'all finished twenty nine and three. Mm -hmm. um, just talking about any games that might have stood you out a little bit in general. I know. You, that everybody I talked about a couple weeks ago, you played North Point, and that game that I went to go see mm -hmm. was Christian Gillian versus uh, Seth Granberry, is what they call it, right. you know, that show. But he's talking about that, you know, how other players in the district got your game a little bit better this year. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a good, it's a, the district going in the right good direction, you know, got North Point, Christian, FAC has got some good young guys, and St. George's, that was a good competition, but I feel like we, we just had a different. We had a different type of monster. We had a different type of guys that can just battle and like. But a couple games that stood out to me were like uh, versus um, Mount Vernon They're from Georgia. I didn't play that game and we. I was I was on the bench. I was like a little cheerleader out there. I was just like, and we pulled it out without me playing. I was like, yeah, we can we're gonna be good this year. Like it was it was like a turning point for me, and I was like really proud of the guys for winning it and. So that's one one of the main games that stood out to me. Uh, your first three years, you started out at Millington, right? And uh, with Coach Gates, can you say to our listeners what kind of accomplishments you made at Millington as well? Millington, uh, it opened up a uh, Coach Gates. He opened up a door for me. He, uh, he believed in me, you know, as a freshman. You know, I was playing varsity at 14 years old, so starting, and so he, uh, you know, he just made me, gave me a chance and first three years, um just I kinda developed my game and then my last year Los I just, you know, showed the showed the city what I can do and so I met made a lot of good relationships, met a lot of good coaches and assistant coaches in Millington and just thankful for, you know, the three years in Millington. Yeah, you're an all state player your junior year, so congratulations on that. Um, what kind of mentor was uh, Coach Davis over here to you? For your final year, it was, it was kind of a difference, you know. There, Coach Dave, Coach Gates and Coach David, different coaches, but like I, I love them both, and he, um, he kind of like a like a best friend to me. I could just sit in his office, talk for a while, and just, and just like this, is what I, you know, he was a mentor. You know, I always kept my head on straight, and he didn't he didn't blow me up too hard, but he wasn't too hard on me. So it was, he keep me level headed, and um, just thankful for that, and um, yeah. Um, I'm glad I made the decision. He, uh, I'm glad I met him. Yeah. So, um, favorite road atmosphere as a Lausanne Link and a Millington Trojan? Uh, let me see. Road. They enjoy playing in the most. Road, let me see. I think a lot of home games in Millington was the best. Like the Mumford games, uh, Raleigh Egypt, Fayetteware games. I don't, I don't have that many good road games because we was, because it was always packed out at Millington. So I had to go with the uh, Fairware or Mumford game for sure. Okay. But Los Angeles, it's got to be the region championship or San Francisco. It was, the whole city was there. And it was just, you know, amazing. I got, got me a dunk game, so I, I, I'll say that. <laughs> uh, just talk about being a Mr. Basketball finalist, not only for the city of Memphis, but also for the, Lausanne community as well for the high school. Oh, it's a, you know, we got 
it's a small list of guys who you know get get a chance to be Mr. Basketball and and do it for a school like Los Angeles. Like past winners like Cameron Payne, Moose Cease. It's just you know it's mean like not just for school but for the city being the only guy from Memphis um, to do it. You know in my division. You know I'm just thankful. And, um, it's what I work for. You know it's, it's good to see it pay off. So. What is the future look like for Mr. Greenberry? Any colleges offers that you want to throw out there? For our listeners, a uh, couple colleges, you know, a couple of community colleges, a um, couple universities contacted me. We're gonna see like when they're when season ends for the colleges to see what uh, what more colleges reach out to me. But I should be, you know, you know, I should have a list of schools in you know, the next couple months. So we'll see. Okay, and then add your Twitter name for our listeners as well. It's just Seth Grimberry, just S E T H Grimberry. All right, Mr. Grimberry, thank you for coming on. Thank you. All right, take two this week on the JS Report. Coach Davis from the Los Angeles Lynx. Coach Davis, welcome back to the show. Appreciate it. Appreciate you having me. Uh, Coach Davis, I know you hate talking about it, but heartbreaker this past Saturday yeah. against Webb School of the uh, Buckle, right? Yeah. So that's the difference between two, two double-A Webb and the two single-A Webb. Uh, just talk about the season so uh, season that y'all had and then this, this past Saturday for our listeners. So we went 29-3 and, 29 and three this year. Uh, I mean, I've had some really good teams, obviously, over the years, you know. Um, since I've been at Lausanne, it's my ninth season. We won the league eight out of nine years. We've um, we've won five regional championships, been a state six times, five times. Uh, I'm about to say six. <laughs> five times to the state final four. We've been a state tournament every year. Um, and, you know, obviously we won, you know, a few state championships. But... With all that being said, this is probably the best team from top to bottom all the way around that I've ever coached. Um, and like I said, I've had more talented players, I had five-star kids, you know, several D1 guys, but I wouldn't trade this team for any of that. Um, I absolutely love this team. Um, just talk about this past Saturday's game with me just a little bit in detail. Yeah. Um, uh, was it just like a slow start kind of, or did – yeah, it really wasn't a slow start. Webb did a good job of trying to uh, – they changed some stuff up defensively. Um, obviously, you got to do that this time of year. That And their athleticism, we haven't seen that probably um, – Seth talked about the Mount Vernon team um, that we played against. We probably haven't seen athleticism like that from top to bottom since probably then. Um, they had a kid who was, you know, 6'8" super athletic, jumped out the gym, and he kind of changed some shots early for us, so we had to figure it out. We missed, you know, I mean, we missed probably eight or so layups that we normally mm -hmm. make just because he kind of changed shots. We had to get used to it. Second half, second half we did. Um, so we're in a battle. We we led for most of the game. Um, and in the third quarter, they took the lead and went up eight, um, and then we fought back, fought back in the fourth quarter, took the lead with, 16 seconds left. Um, Seth hit two, probably big, two of the biggest shots that I've ever seen any of, any of our any player make. I mean, he came down. We caught out a set that we normally run 154. He had the perfect read. He stopped, hit a big three, cut the lead to one. Um, Trey and Jaden got a steal um, and pitched it ahead. So now we're up. We're down one. Um, Seth comes off the screen, gets to his spot. Once he got to, once he got to that mid-range spot, I knew it was going to be a bucket. He he hit it. Uh, probably one of the biggest clutch shots that I've that I've ever had. We go up one. Uh, referee said that they didn't see our timeout with less than eight seconds left. Uh, call timeout, timeout. They didn't get it. They we didn't get an opportunity to set our defense. They threw the ball ahead and just threw up a, a three, and they beat us with like. Four seconds left on the clock. So yeah, that's definitely a heartbreaker. Yeah, yeah. The three losses this year, fans, uh, one point, two point, and three points. So yeah, yeah. one, yeah, one point, one point, and two. Oh, yeah. So we lost by a total. We lost three games by a total of four points. Uh, just talk about we talked with Mr. Gameberry, um, him being a Mr. Basketball final, not only for our city, but also for the Lausanne community as well. I mean, it's huge. Um, you know, Seth has solidified himself as one of the top players, um, obviously in the state, um, you know, and for all, for us, 
you know, the expect we put hard expectations on ourselves every year. We, we're, you know, not unlike other teams. Like the goal for us every year is a state championship. Absolutely. Every every year we come in, we try to win state. Um, but it's special when you have special players like Seth, who had, you know, came into this year and he just extremely just worked his butt off. Like he really, really has. He, his game has went to the next level. And so individual awards sometimes, you know, are needed. And he has worked and he deserves it. Um, and he set himself apart of other guys, like he just said, Mark Gasol, you know, Mr. Basketball, you know, Lisa. Cameron Payne, yeah. Mr. Basketball, you know, Musa Cisse, uh, Mr. Basketball. You know, so all these guys, so Seth has put his name as one of the best players that have ever come out of Los Angeles. All right, last question. How did it feel to coach your own son this past couple of years? Uh, you know, uh, it, 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 no, I mean, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, <clears throat> is it different? It's, 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 it has its advantages and disadvantages, right? Um, sometimes, and, and I hope he sees this, because sometimes, you know, it's unfair when you coach your own kid, uh, because the expectation is so high, uh, you know, and then everything is magnified mm -hmm. and is blowed up, you know, so if he hits a big shot, you know, oh, he's supposed to do that. Or if he has a turnover, it's always the coach's son, you know. So it takes some poise, uh, you know, when you're coaching your own kid. Uh, Trey has a chance to be be a really good player. Uh, you know, so it's – but he works his butt off. And, and I think that's the difference. Like, I think with his teammates, they see <clears throat> how hard he works. Um, and they see how hard he is on himself. So a lot of times they're, you know, Seth was really good about that. He like, come on, Trey, like not like get out your own head, like leave it alone because, you know, he's so hard on himself. But that's what makes him kind of special too, you know, because he wants the best. Um, and and like I said, having good teammates, guys that play on a high level, he had an opportunity to see leaders like Seth's leadership this year, Jamarcus' leadership this year. So I mean, you know. It's it's on him to try to take it to the thing to the next level next year. Yeah, the games that I saw last couple of years, you know, with you coaching them, he might not be in the point column, but he's always going for that offense or defense rebounds, and try, always getting his teammates involved by rebounding the basketball and also getting that assist out there as well. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, Seth Seth was average, average like for for us to be really good when we were really good this year. Seth was at, at about twenty, Jamarcus was at like sixteen, seventeen, Trey was at like. 15 like that's when we were like really really rolling it and at our at our best so I mean you know he he can't score the ball but he likes to do he just wants to win he's just a winner you know and, uh, and so I think going into next year obviously his, his point production is going to have to go up you know we're going to be losing to Mr. Basketball you know and you know a guaranteed 20 points a game, you know, if, if he wanted to go get it. So his points will have to go up. He have to go up to that 16, 17, 18 range for us to be successful. But, I mean, he's ready for it. He'll be all right. All right. Talk about it. I'm afraid to bring this up. Your assistant coaches that have been around the last couple of years, they yep. they deserve a lot of credit as well. So, you know. Oh, man. I, I keep on, you know, bringing up assistant coaches because they work nonstop in the weight room, the locker room, and then as well. I have a great staff, you know. Um, this year's staff is just absolutely amazing. Tyler Park um, really kind of helped open up our stuff offensively, um, taking it to the next level. Um, really worked with our guards. He's a phenomenal young coach. Um, he really is. He'll be a head coach one day. He, I mean, when I say he does a lot of really good things, and the boys absolutely love him. Um, and, and then um, KG Walker. He, you know, not only does he help us, his role is so big because he doesn't only help us on the court, you know, kind of run, running our defense and helping get guys in line. But then he's also a math teacher, right? Yeah. So he's able to kind of come in and help guys out, uh, you know, from an academic standpoint. Uh, both of them were former college athletes like myself. Um, so they kind of, they, they get everything. But that's a unique thing about Lausanne as well. It's not just them. We have two full-time strength and conditioning coaches. I mean, I don't know if you noticed Seth's body this year, uh, mm. but he's... I think he gets yeah. a weight coach. I think he gets like yeah. 30 pounds. <laughs> yeah, he's really, his body is really, his body's filled out. All those um, big backs. <laughs> <laughs> he, his body's filled out, um, you know. 
he was already athletic, but now I mean he's more explosive. Everything I mean he's he's dunking the basketball around the goal. Like I mean, so we got two full-time strength and conditioning coaches that work with our guys hand in hand. Um, you know, and like we're we're off this week. We're off spring break, but then we're back rolling because that's the standard. Yeah. You know, we'll start up in the spring and we're lifting. We're lifting, conditioning the skills, you know, right after because that's just who we are. Absolutely. Don't be a stranger. Welcome back. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. All right, guys, my take three this week, we're going to be doing a little bit of look ahead for our area teams real quick. Girls basketball, uh, Broadcrest girls are playing Innsworth in the state playoff game. You know, Coach Smith does a great job over there. I think mm -hmm. they do have a shot of winning it all. What do y'all think? No, I think they do, too. Uh, big shout-out to Coach Smith. Um, I've, I've seen this team this year. They, 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 they're pretty good. Seth, so, you seen any of it? I heard Brackers gave Barley girls a good look, so I haven't seen much of them, but if they give Barley a good look, so they, they're probably pretty good. And then in local action also, you got um, in the boys, you got Briar Chris boys with Coach Harrington, and mm -hmm. to me, Jacob Gazzo should have been a Mr. Basketball finalist as well mm -hmm. in that division. They're playing NBA. How do you think where Briar Chris boys have a shot? Yeah, Briar Chris boys are, you know, they've been all year – um, we, we talked about this with the, with our team. They've been all year, you know, hugging that one or two spot. Um, I think they I think they got a good chance. They got to watch out. In, uh, they, those, uh, NBA. Yeah, NBA got some shooters. They can shoot. They can shoot the ball. So you know, if they lock up defensively, I think they'll have a chance. What about your counterpart in Jay Nash and Cooper Haynes and all that? Oh, yeah, you know, Cooper, good friend, and Jay Nash, the boys. Well. They got an all around team with Fred and. Mm -hmm. they, got, they got a good team, so I feel like they have a real chance to win it, win it all. So. Yeah, that game would be Friday uh, afternoon for the boys, and then girls will play uh, Friday afternoon as well. So playing back to back. Okay. So a cool concept for Division II, yeah. yep. single A and double A. All of those games are at Tennessee Tech, by the way, as well. So, guys, I'm going to throw some girls' games out there that are playing tonight for the, like whoever can host this real quick. Okay. Middle College versus Westwood in single A, Manassas versus Hope Crest in double A. Faye Ware with Coach Smith, the way that she's been doing pretty well over there, played Melrose. Mm -hmm. And then Coach Shapley, the Barlett Lady Panthers, played Whitehaven at Houston as well. And all those games will be tonight. And then, you know, good luck to all the local teams out there. Mm -hmm. Because those teams would play, if they win, they would host on Saturday night. All the boys' sub-state games will be played next Monday mm -hmm. as well. So they would basically play their region championship tomorrow. Yeah. So, it's, it's important. Yeah. It's, it's important. Good luck to good luck to them. You know, I, that's what I told Seth. Uh, in our team, you win, you win a region, you get an opportunity to play sub state at home. Like that's huge. You know, so good luck to all those teams. Any encouragement to uh, any opponents out there? Just leave it all on the court. You know, it's do it that time. And like you said, a home game is important. And it could be our last game for the seniors, and it's just you know trying to try bring their ring home. And good luck to all the local teams out there again, and uh, like he said, just bring the gold ball back to the nine and one. Uh, this show this week and on my take four is in honor of uh, Miss Blunt Smith, a teacher from Barlow High School over the years. And also one of the little Barlow Panther fans out there that passed away this morning at four o'clock this morning. Um, she'll be very missed by the Barlow community, not only for the Barlow basketball community, but the Barlow High School community and the Barlow City Schools in general. So Coach Smith, this show was dedicated to you this week on the JS Report. And like I said, you'll be missed and we do love you. And uh, and also, baseball is coming up soon, so uh, if you might want to go watch any baseball scrimmages or games, that's coming up soon on the JS Report as well. One. Okay, so it's, it's been more than 15 minutes, it's been 30 minutes. 
I know you're done with your homework by now. That's only been like 10 minutes, right? Now, man, you looking up past Lazan, Mr. Basketball? Wow, Marcus Saul, Cam, Musa C. Say he's D1. You got to go NBA, man. You got to go D1. You think you can handle that? Hey, that's the plan.